What if we were known more for what we love instead of what we hate? Would that make a difference? What if we spent more time loving people and less time being angry with them? Would that make a difference? What if we gave unconditionally of our time, our talent, our treasures? Would that make a difference? What if we shared the difference Jesus has made in our lives and stopped pushing away those who aren't there yet? Would that make a difference? What if we walked in the steps of our Savior, sitting with the broken, caring for the poor, loving the lost? Would that make a difference? We live in the midst of ruins, surrounded by brokenness, pain, and loss. It's a moment made for us, a calling we were created to answer, not with judgment, not with harsh words or self-righteousness, but with love, the love of Jesus. What if the church acted like the church? Would that make a difference? Welcome to FPC Lantana. Welcome to Church Online. We're so glad you're with us to worship yes. our King. Um, that video, didn't it just hit your heart? And we live in such a great country. We do. We're so blessed here. And there's still among us a lot of people that are hopeless and confused and struggle and but we have the answer don't we living inside of us the world just needs a people the church to rise up and to spread the truth of jesus the love of jesus the hope of jesus right yes um we're gonna do it's amazing we're we're breaking out this song today i know you've heard it on the radio but it's called i believe and it's basically taking us back to our our, our roots, our, our statement of faith in Christ, reminding us that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Amen? And that he's our God and he's on the throne and he's over all of this stuff, this peripheral stuff that is going on among us. Amen? He's bigger. And we need to be a people of trust and faith. We need to be a people of prayer, right? That pastor's going to bring four weeks of wonderful study on prayer, and it's integral for us to pray, and, and, and the church is going to be judged first, amen? And we need to repent on behalf of not only ourselves, but on behalf of America for what we've done and the bloodshed that we have on our hands. And God then will hear from heaven and heal our land, amen? So with that, let's quickly pray, and then worship the Father. Lord, our heart cry today is one thing. We love you, and we just want to give you our whole heart today. You know, we sing songs, and, and we worship you with instruments and melodies, but you're looking not for the worship, but for the worshipers. Here we are, Father. Here we are. We pour our heart out to you today. Come, be among us. Be welcomed into this place among us. Inhabit our praises. And let your joy break out among the, the people today. We want to fellowship with you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. I believe. I 
I believe there is one salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I believe in the crucifixion. By his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, his life is destined. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God and overcome. The King who was and is and ever mighty name I believe yeah. I believe I believe yes I believe in the hope of heaven he's preparing a place for me far beyond what hearts imagine ears have heard or eyes have seen i believe that the day is coming he's returning to claim his bride light the altar keep it burning see the lamb who rose a roaring light all praise to Of the gospel of Jesus Christ I could never walk away From the one who saved my life Well, no, I'll never be ashamed Of the gospel of Jesus Christ I could never walk away From the one who saved my life No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ How could I ever walk away From the one who saved my life yes. All praise to God the Father All praise to Christ the Son All praise to the Holy Spirit Our God has overcome Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Okay, here we go. So glad 
me, change me, darkness help me, down to Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I now a new creation Christ. The old is gone, there's new life. I live by faith, not by sight. This song is a new song we haven't done before. It kind of sings itself. And sometimes when you're in prayer closet, you don't know what to say or do. So listen to these words. When my heart is over, Come undone, I will pray. I pray to your name. When the winds of change have blown, when I feel all alone, I will pray. I'll pray to your name. 
It's when there's nothing I can do I will lift my eyes to you You're all I have You're all I need I'm broken hearted On my knees I will pray to you I'll pray to your name You're all I have You're all I need Lord It's not my will But yours I see When I pray to you I pray to your name When the joys of life I've found I will pray I'll pray to your name and when I seek your love and grace there you cover my mistakes and I pray I'll pray to your name And when my life has been renewed I will lift my eyes to you Cause you're all I have You're all I need I'm broken hearted on my I'll pray to your name. You're all I have. You're all I need. It's not my will, but yours I see when I pray to you. I'll pray to your name. Cause when there's nothing, nothing I can do, I will lift my eyes to you. When there's nothing I can do, I will lift my eyes to you. When there's nothing I can do, I will lift my eyes to you Cause when my life has been renewed I will lift my eyes to you Cause you're all I have You're all I need I'm broken hearted All my Pray to your name And you're all I have You're all I need Lord. It's not my will But yours I see When I pray to you I'll pray to your name Cause when there's nothing I can do, I'll pray to your name. And when my life has been renewed, I'll pray to your name.
So good morning. How y'all doing today? It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, so we're in week two of our series, If My People, and it's this, this whole call for prayer. And, and while we're doing this series, it's I, I said we're going to spend, you know, four weeks on taking time to look into God's word on when the people of God came together in prayer and God showed up. You know, last week we started out with 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. And, and it's a scripture that many of us know, you know, if my people who are called by my name, and, and it goes on about humbling ourselves, seeking God, and, and that he will heal our land. And, and as I said last week, that, that scripture, that, that promise was given to King Solomon while he was dedicating the temple to God. And, and so that the original promise was given to the nation of Israel, but, but like I said, there's, there's principles in there that we can use today, that we can use in our own life, and, and Lord knows we need the United States healed. We need this land healed, and, and it takes all of us to come together to do it, and, and if we apply those principles that... Um, God gave to Solomon for the nation of Israel, maybe we could see this land healed. But ultimately, if we took that time, we could see our own land, we could see our bodies, we could see our homes, the place that we go, we could see healing there just by taking those same principles. If we humbled ourselves, if we took time in prayer, if we sought God in everything that we, would, we did, it would make a difference in our lives and affect us. And if we can be affected by that, we can then affect the world. We can affect not only our homes, our communities, and beyond, then we could affect and hopefully heal this entire land. But it's up to us to do our part and continue to, to seek him in everything that we do. Now, I'd encourage you, if you missed last week, um, you can go back, you can go to our website, you can go ahead and watch it again, or, or you know, if you saw it and you're like, man, I, I'm not applying this in my life, or I really don't remember it, go back and watch it. You know, the, the old sermons are out there, you can go back and watch any of them all over again. You know, go to our website, our YouTube channel, you can go all the way back since I've been here and see every single sermon. And so it, it's a chance that, hey, I, I need to remember this. You can go back and listen to it again. And, and I find myself, I do it. You know, I may get up here and preach it, but there's times I'm like, man, I don't remember what I said. It, or it's, hey, that wasn't in my sermon. That was pretty good, man. God really gave me that. I need to go back and listen to it myself. Because also, am I doing the same thing? Am I, not, am I doing what I'm preaching? And I think that's really big because I can't just preach it and not do it. I, I need to do the same thing that I, I come up here and preach and say, hey, we need to apply this in your, our lives. Well, guess what? That means I need to apply it in my own life also. So it's always good to be able to go back and, and listen again so it's always out there. And, you know, as we continue in this series, you know, looking at times when God's people came together and prayed, and God showed up. I, I think it's amazing whenever I go back and I, I read about the early church. You know, you, you take time in the book of Acts, and it's amazing the power that they had, the miracles that happened in the church, the person. They had some wild personalities of people back in the early church. But, but when you look at it, I love the fact that, you know, one day 3,000 people came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It says 3,000 people accepted the Lord and were baptized. I'm like, wow, that's, that's crazy, isn't it? And then in the scripture we're going to be in today, prior to it, 5,000 people heard the word and accepted Jesus. That is powerful. That is like totally crazy. You think about it today, it'd be like, you know, 5,000 people, well, maybe in the state of Florida accept Jesus today, you know, or maybe in the southeast at one time. 5,000 people. And, and so it's crazy to think about, wait, wait, we got, we got all this technology. We got these nice buildings. Remember, they didn't have buildings where they were at. Sometimes it was under a tree or it was in a field. 
We got buildings. We got air conditioning. Thank God, you know, because it's hot outside. Yeah, we got great technology. We have the ability right now. We've got people. Generally, we'll have people from Jamaica and Baltimore and around the U.S. actually watching us online, seeing this live and in person. Yeah, they couldn't do that back in the day. So we, we got all these technologies. We got money to be able to help people. We've got all this stuff. And it's like, where's the power that they had? There was a power in the early church that we don't see today. And, and I think it's because we miss it. We, we've gotten so caught up on everything else, we forget to go back to the basics of Christianity. And when you look at the early church... Guess what? They didn't need any of this. I find it totally amazing. You think about all these people, you know, Jesus fed the 5,000, and, and it was men, not count women and children. And I think back about it, man, so he preached to like 7,500, 8,000 people that day, and he had no microphone. There was no sound system. There was none of that stuff. Okay? There wasn't a big screen so people could see. Isn't that pretty amazing? What are we missing today? I think we're missing part of that power that comes from God, and we need to be able to plug into it. We need to be able to really dig into what they did compared to what we do today. And, and, and here's the thing. I, I think that in the scripture we're going to look at today, there's three things, three sources of power that they got plugged into that I believe that they plugged into that we don't totally plug into. I think we do some of it, but not to the extent that they did it. And, and, and with that, I think we, you know, the whole big idea is this, that the power that rested on the early church, and we know there is power because we read about it, I still believe it's available for us today. I believe it's available for every single one of us. You're like, okay, pastor, that's great. So, so what do we have to do? I think we need to plug in. We need to plug into that, the same sources that they used over 2,000 years ago. And remember, it wasn't about the building. It wasn't about, you know, resources with videos and, and YouTube and Facebook, and it wasn't any of that stuff. They actually did it by word of mouth. They actually talked to people. <gasps> Think about that. They actually talked. They actually spoke. They spent time together. They were a community. And what they had, we can also plug into. So if you have a Bible with you, we're going to be in Acts chapter 4, verses 31 through 33. If you don't have a Bible with you, there is one in the back of the pew. In the back of the pew is going to be on page 1,257. And I just want to tell you, I really enjoy these verses right here. It's an amazing set of verses, and I'll get into it as we go through it. But this time, can I get everyone to all rise for the reading and the hearing of God's Word? Acts chapter 4, 31 through 33. When they had prayed... The place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. Now the entire group of those who believed were of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But instead they held everything in common. With great power the apostles were given testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was on all of them. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So, part of my favorite verses. Um, anyone who knows me knows why this is part of my favorite verses. But, but I think the first thing we see is we need to plug into that power of prayer. It starts out with them in prayer. Now, to give you some context, Peter and John had been arrested for, for preaching Christ crucified, and they had to go in front of the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin basically told them, hey, you can't preach Christ crucified. They figured out there really wasn't nothing they could do to charge them with, so they let them go. And Peter and John go back to, to the assembly to where the people are at, and they tell them this whole story. 
And, and it's if you read just prior to this in, in Acts chapter 4, um, you know, 5,000 people accepted the Lord. Peter and John were taken into custody, actually preached, and the Sanhedrin, when Peter got up and talked and John got up to talk, were amazed because they're like, hey, these are just fishermen. But they spoke with power. And they basically spoke Christ crucified and told them that they're the ones who did it. They were bold enough to go out there and do it. So now when they go back, all the people are excited. They came back. And what do they do? They come together in prayer. And it's they come together, and it's that power from the, pair, from the prayer that we see. And what we see is that God honored the prayers of his people. He honored their prayers, and they showed up. And, and I think most of us, you know, we understand the importance of prayer, but I think we're a little different than they were. See, we pray when we're shaken. Something happens in our life, we pray, right? Oh, man, I got to go to the Lord in prayer. My life's shaking. My, my, something's gone wrong. It, it ain't working right. And, and so we go because we're shaken. They went to be shaken. They went to the Lord in prayer, and the place they were at was shaken. When is the last time you prayed and the place you were at was shaken? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's like, wow. Imagine being in a group like this. We come together, we pray, and the earth moves under our feet. That would be totally amazing, isn't it? Now, here's another thing. What about coming together as a group of people, and as you're praying, you're shaken to your own core. You're, you feel the presence of the Spirit. You're, you're shaken inside, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. That's the feeling I love. That is a feeling that's totally amazing to me. And, and I want to let you know, on, on Tuesdays, you know, it's the reason why we have Shaken Prayer Group, because we come together to be shaken I'll get into more of that later, but the, there's something about every Tuesday I go into the room where Shake and Prayer Group meets. And as I walk in there and I bring the prayer request in and I take time and I just start praying, I want to tell you, the AC is not on when I go in there, but the feeling I get of the movement of God. Literally be in there praying, and I can feel the presence of God being in that room, knowing that that night we're going to be able to come to his throne room and pray to be shaken. There's something powerful when people come together in prayer, and that's exactly what we see here, is they, not as an individual, but as a group, came together to pray, and the place they were at was shaken. It just totally amazes me when I read this. And like I said, we understand the importance of prayer. And I'd encourage you, if you're not doing it now, take time to pray. Pray for your community. Pray for the church. Pray for the people that you work with. Pray for the people around you. Take time and truly pray each and every day. Not just when something goes wrong. You know, it's easy something goes wrong. We want to go to, oh, Lord, help me. But what about when things are going right? Lord, shake me. Come together to be shaken. Expect to be shaken by God when you come into his presence. And, and I truly believe that prayer is a secret power of God. Through prayer, we, we connect with our God. We're able to go into the throne room of our heavenly Father. And you know what? He hears your voice. That to me is crazy. God wants to have a conversation with you. He wants you to come to him in prayer. But here's the key. Not only as individuals. He wants us as a group, as Christ followers, to come together to him in prayer. Now, as you look through the Bible, the prayer throughout the scripture, you see that, that prayer it, there's promises within prayer in the Bible. There's clear instructions on prayer. Uh, there's commands that tell us that we should pray. We're even told to pray without ceasing, to where we should always be in prayer. And, and I believe that as a church, 
You know, we, we do pray, but I don't believe we pray like the early church. I don't believe we truly do prayer the way they used to do it. Why? Because we're so caught up in everything else. But, but I truly believe that, you know, if we actually came together and prayed the way the early church prayed, you would see a difference in the church. You would see a difference in our communities. We would see a difference in this world today. Now, with that same thing, you know, you know we, we know that God hears our prayers. We know that um, God uses us. But, you know, we, we need to be fervent in our prayer. I don't think we fer fervently pray like we should pray. Um, I think we need to be very specific when we pray. Now, one of the things that anyone who knows me, I'm a very specific prayer. I want to pray specifics. I don't like a general, hey, pray for so-and-so's healing. Well, what kind of healing? What's wrong? What, what's the name of the disease they have? What part of the body is it in? Now, I realize God knows all that already, but to me there's something powerful about praying for someone who's got cancer in their right kidney and specifically praying that God heals that right kidney. I, I believe in specifics. Back when, when I first met Patty, I was very specific on what I wanted God to do. This is what I'm looking for, God. This is what I'm looking for in a woman. And I was so specific that I actually, when I prayed, Lord, if she is the one, give me the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. And, you notice I, I, I went farther. And give me the words to say. Because, see, I can talk to pretty much anybody. But it's that give me the words to say. And it's funny because, you know, that was part of my prayer. If this is the one, give me the words to say. That I'd met other people that I, hey, had that opportunity to talk. And I was like, nothing. Wasn't the right one. Okay, God, she ain't the right one. I'm moving on. When I met Patty, we are actually were able to, we were serving in the church, and we ended up face-to-face, -face, and God gave me the words to say. That's when I knew. See, I was specific. I like being specific on prayers. And it's one of the reasons that if you get, I'll ask, well, what kidney? What part of the body? What, you know, I want specifics. I believe in praying in specifics. Um, the other thing the early church did, Prayed on one accord. <clears throat> in other words, they were all focused on the same mission in life. They were focused on the same things of God. There wasn't a personal agenda. They were focused on Jesus. They were focused on his word. And I truly believe that as a church today and as Christians today, we're not all focused on the one accord. We're not on the same page and we're not focused on the same common ground because we all put our individuality into it. We need to become focused. And the other thing is, man, they prayed as a group. They came together as a group and prayed and did it often. It wasn't just Sundays. They came together and broke bread all the time. And they took time in prayer all the time. We miss that today. We miss coming together. We miss taking that time in prayer. Uh, the other thing, you know, I truly believe that you know, as, we, as we've grown and, and as we grow as individuals, here's a reality for us. We have been well trained on theology of the Bible, right? We could all be theologians to an extent. We, we, we all have been trained on, well, this is what we do inside the church. This is how you act. This is how you talk. Yeah. We, we all know that, right? Kind of like the rules and regulations of the church, of the body of Christ. You know, we know what them are. I think we're well trained in them, but man, we are illiterate when it comes to prayer. And, and you want to know how to learn to pray? Pray. That's how you learn to pray. Actually taking time in prayer. Taking time and not just when you're shaken, but taking that time to be shaken. Pray to learn how to pray. Take that time to really say, you know what, I just need to, Lord, I just need you. 
and just have a conversation with your Heavenly Father. And it can be about, you may think it's stupid, but guess what? God cares. God cares whatever you've got. You know, a lot of times we won't pray because, oh, you know, God's too busy to worry about this thing that I got. Guess what? He cares about what you got. It could be a splinter, and he cares. Think about that. It could be a splinter, and he cares about it. It could be you stubbed your toe, and God cares that much about it, or you woke up on the wrong side of bed, or whatever it may be. God cares enough to hear about it, and he wants to have that conversation. So you want to learn how to pray and become intelligent in prayer, take time to pray. Literally take time throughout the day and pray. I think the other thing they did is, like I said, they didn't just pray as individuals. They, They prayed as a community. They prayed as a group. They came together as a church to pray. Now, we do that on Tuesday nights. And let me tell you something, if if you don't realize the power of prayer, ask someone who's part of the Shaken Prayer Group. So over the last, what, three, three and a half years, we've gotten together every Tuesday night to pray over every single prayer request that comes into this church. You want to know the healing that we've seen? Transformation in people's lives? We've seen People with provision, we've seen healing, we've seen wisdom brought on people. We've seen so much over the course of three and a half years that it's absolutely mind-boggling and it's amazing to say, man, we get to be a part of seeing God move. Now here's a better question. Do y'all know who's in Shaken Prayer Group? Do y'all know who comes together every Tuesday night? I know the people who go say, yeah, I do. But the rest of you, do you know? Now, I'm not going to point them out, but, but here's, here's the thing. If you want to be a part of that, hey, we're well open Tuesday night, 7 p.m. We're in the library classroom, same place we do Wednesday night service, same place the women meet on Sunday morning. We're over there, and we take the time to pray out loud. Now, don't get uh, that's why I know scares a lot of people. Man, i got to pray out loud? I can't pray out loud. It's a conversation. It's very easy. There's no right or wrong words. But when we come together as a group and we pray, I'll tell you how amazing it is. You know, we pick different scripture that we're going to read. The number of times that we'll pick scripture and you're waiting for your turn to pray and someone else reads the same scripture you were going to read. And you're like, what? Or during their prayer, they start talking about scripture that you're going to be reading. You're like, you got to be kidding me. Did they read my notes? No. It's the power of God and the Holy Spirit being there together because, we're guess what? We're all of one accord. We've come together to lift up prayer requests and bring them to God. It's an amazing thing. I'd encourage you to join us on, on, on Tuesday night, 7 p.m. It's an amazing feeling, and I'm, I'm telling you, you feel the presence of God. If you don't feel the presence of God, that's on you. Because God is in that room. Now, the same thing I would tell you, I think it's great. You know, a lot of people will be like, hey, I can, you know, they'll send an email to the office. Hey, can you pray for this person? I think it's great. And hopefully you just don't end there. You know, okay, well, the church is praying for them. Hopefully you're still praying for them. Now, I'll tell you the next step is follow up. Because it's embarrassing, and, and we, we've prayed for people that have been healed for months on end, and we didn't know they were healed because no one ever gave us an update. And then we finally get a hold, hey, what's going on? Oh, that, oh they're healed. They're in, with Jesus in heaven. Or, oh, they got healed, and the cancer's gone, and it's been a couple months. Well, it would have been nice if we knew. So if you're going to put a prayer request out there, That's not the end. That means you need to be taking time in prayer. You need to be truly, hey, this is part of your prayer life just like it's part of ours. And then follow up. Because that follow up is when you get to see miracles happen. And it is so amazing when you know, man, I've been praying to God and he answered that prayer. 
It's an amazing feeling. And that's what the early church did that we don't do today. They dug in. They got <clears throat> into the power of God's prayer. And I truly believe <clears throat> plugging into the power of prayer as a family in Christ is better than 10,000 revival meetings because prayer is more powerful than meetings. Then we need to take that time in prayer each and every day. Next thing they had, they had this love. They had a compassion. Uh, I love the fact that it says they were of one heart and mind. Are we of one heart and mind? Maybe. If you're married to someone, you may be of one heart and one mind. But ultimately, if you're married, guess what? There's times you're not of one heart and one mind. And you're married to the person. So we as Christ followers, are we really of one heart and one mind? You know, as Christ followers, we should be about two things. Jesus and his word. That's what we're called to be. That's what our focus should be on. We should be focused on Jesus and his word. And we move forward from there. You think about they were of one heart, one mind. They cared about each other. That They were there for each other. They cared for non-believers. They wanted to help non-believers. They wanted to help believers, all these things. They possessed qualities, and they possessed that servant heart just like Jesus. And you think about this in Philippians 2, 3 through 8, it says this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not to his own interest, but rather to the interests of others. Adopt the same attitude of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. The people in the early church lived out the life of their Savior. They humbled themselves. They cared about other people around them. They weren't about themselves. They cared for others. If you remember, Jesus said, his people will be known for what? Our love. We would be known for our love. We would be known for our compassion for others. How's your love and compassion for others? Think about it. On a regular basis, even at work, with the people you don't like being with, are you loving and compassionate? Do people know you're a Christ follower at work, or would they be surprised? You mean you went to church on Sunday? What did the pastor talk about? Love and compassion. Did you hear him? <laughs> are, are you doing what, he, had, what he, he said we should be doing as the early church? Oh, not you. How can I love you? Compassionate to you? Are you kidding me? They had love and compassion for everyone who was around them. Jesus had love and compassion for the people around him. Even people that were different. The Samaritan, the woman at the well. Jesus cared about them. Jesus cared for those who may have been considered the outside. Matthew, a tax collector. Jesus cared about him. Fishermen, all these different people. Judas, who would betray him, Jesus still cared about him. He still showed love and compassion, knowing full well that he was going to betray him. Now, I know me. You're going to betray me? It ain't going to get that far. <laughs> and I'm not going to be loving. I'm not going to be compassionate. I'm going to be praying for God to smite him ahead of time, whatever it may be. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to love one another as we should. And I truly believe that, that if we walked in uni unity as we're called to, People would see our profession of faith in Jesus as truth. It wouldn't just be a Sunday act. 
they would see us, and every time they saw us, if we had that love, if we had that compassion, and we walked in the humility of Jesus, people would see it every day. And there is no other testimony which preaches louder than our love and our compassion for others. And understand, it, it's his love that, that, that acts, it's got action to it. It's not just words, you know, the, oh, I love you. Oh, Jesus loves you and so do I. Y'all, you know what I mean? Now, it sounds good, right? Oh, well, bless your heart. You know, it, it, it sounds good, and, but here's the reality. It's just words. Our love needs to show, just like it reminds us in 1 John 3.18, it reminds us that love is not word or speech. Love is action and truth. Is that the kind of love you have? Love shown in action, shown in the truth in the life that you live. It can't be just words. We need to live it out each and every day. Have that same love and compassion that the early church had. We need to plug in and have that kind of love that Jesus had. And ultimately with Without that love, without the love that, that Jesus shows us, whatever we do is in vain. It, it's a waste of what we're doing if we're just doing it to be seen, if we're just doing it to be heard. It actually has to be applied and we do what we're called to do. Think about it. The love, I think, you know, you talk about revivals in church. You know what church needs? It needs a love revival. We need a revival of love. We need a revival of compassion. We need a, a revival of being like Jesus. You know, it, it's great. Oh, we're going to have a revival. We're going to have a tent. We're going to do all this stuff. But here's the thing. If we're not doing what God called us to do, you think God's going to show up? It's going to be done by man, and we're going to try and make it happen. And then when it fails, we're going to be like, oh, I don't know what happened. You know what? You didn't bring God into the equation. You didn't bring prayer. You didn't bring love. You didn't bring compassion. You said, oh, we can do this because we've always done this, and we forget who we're doing it for, and it becomes more about us. And when it becomes more about us, that love and that compassion is not there. Think about this, verse 32. Love made them considerate of others. Love made people more important than possessions, and love enabled Christians to put away their differences. Think about that. The, the early church was a group of people <clears throat> made up from different regions, different nationalities, different backgrounds, everything, all these differences around them. But you know what? They came together under one accord. They came together with one mission, and that was to do what Jesus called them to do. They came together as a group and prayed. They loved and had compassion for each other, for other believers, and even for non-believers. They were so different than we are today. Imagine that. Someone's more important than your possessions. Pastor, don't be talking like that. Don't tell me I got to sell everything and follow Jesus. No, I'm not going to tell you that. But possessions become idols. And idols separate us from God. So we need to watch where our possessions sit. And understand that someone else, another believer, a non-believer, someone going through something is more important than our possessions we don't want to make them idols in our lives. So we need to plug into prayer. We need to plug into to love and compassion. And the other thing we need to do is plug into that power of declaring the gospel. Yes, declaring the gospel. I, I love how it reads in here. It says they had great power. There was great power rested on the apostles. There was great power. And, and remember, apostles, yeah, we, we think of apostles you know, or the same as, you know, you have P 
Peter, John, Matthew, you know, the apostles. Well, apostle is actually um, one who goes. It was a messenger. And are we all messengers of Jesus Christ? So the apostles had great power. As messengers of Jesus Christ, do we have great power? Yes. Do we use it? No. They were plugged in to that power from God to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had great power. They were out preaching God's word. They carried the gospel to a world that was desperate. Think about the early church. The world was desperate. And it's amazing the way God orchestrated it because Rome was in power. And you know what Rome did? Rome built roads. So you could now move from one city to the next. And it made the movement across Europe that much easier. And you know what the disciples and apostles of Jesus did? They walked down them Romans road and they told people about Jesus. They willingly went above and beyond to tell people the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think of the roads we have today. Not just Lantana Road. You got the roads out there in cyberspace, you got Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever else is out there, Instagram, Truth Social, whatever it is. There's so many out there, I don't even know. I found out when I was on vacation that there's like 37 or 38 different social media networks. I was like, what? It's like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, YouTube. Found out there's a whole lot more than that. But the reality is, those are highways that each one of us can use to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can spread the gospel, we can declare the gospel of Jesus, just like the early church did. And we can do it with great power. We have the greatest message ever told. The greatest message in the world we have. All we got to do is tell the story. Just tell it to people. Now, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I bet if I asked right now, how many of you told so in the gospel of Jesus Christ in the last week, I probably have very few hands up in this room. And if I said in the last month, I'd still probably have very few hands. Because the reality is we don't do it. We don't tell people about Jesus. We don't go out and spread the gospel. The early church did it. 3,000 people one day, 5,000 people another day. You know why? Because they were telling people about it. We need to plug into that power of declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. You get to spend eternity in heaven because you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Here's the reality. How many people do you know that need to know that same thing? They need to know Jesus. The problem comes with, well, I, I, I don't know how to tell it. Tell them what happened to you. Give them your testimony. Tell them what Jesus has done in your life. All of us understand the basics, okay? We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. God loved us. He sent his son to die on a cross. He rose from the dead. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I'm now spending eternity in heaven. That's not hard, is it? You know what's hard about it? I'm going to be judged. Oh, I don't want to upset somebody. Well, they might say, no, here's the reality. None of us save anybody. Salvation comes through Christ alone. We plant seeds. We tell people the gospel. We live out the gospel every day of our lives. Now, notice I said we live out the gospel. If we're going to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to people, we need to be living that gospel in our own lives. People need to see us doing what God called us to do. Through prayer, through love, through compassion, telling people the gospel of Jesus Christ so then let God move and do what he does. Saving people is God's business, not ours. Our job is to do what God calls us to do. 
for us to preach the good news. The power of God is paramount through it all. We can preach it. We can witness it. We can tell. We can give them the best message they've ever heard about Jesus Christ. And not a single person will be saved if God doesn't move. If the Holy Spirit isn't moving in their life, they will never be saved. But we can plant the seed. And when people see us doing what we're called to do, it can change the world. Want to know what the early church did that we forgot? They stuck to the basics. They got back to the basics, and we need to do the same thing. Prayer. Take time in prayer as a church, individually with other people, Someone come up here to the altar to pray at the end of service. That person should not be up here alone. If someone comes to this altar, other brothers and sisters in Christ should come around them and raise their petitions to God with them. There's power in that. You see someone hurting on the street. Oh, hey, let me send this prayer request into the office. Guess what? Don't just send a prayer request in. Stop right then and there and pray for the person. Ask others to come in and pray. Hey, we, we need this person needs a miracle. Let's pray. Let's make sure we, we do our part to let God move, to let God do what he does. And then, hey, you know what? Hey, you know, I got that prayer request, and I've been praying for you. What's going on? Oh, well, I've seen this, this, this. It's amazing when you see the miracles of God. And when you're actually taking that time to pray for someone by name, being specific on whatever it is that's bothering them. You know? And, and that's why I said, be specific. Pray for so-and-so they're not feeling well. What's going on? I don't know. Ask. Hey, I, I know I'm going to pray for you, but I'm very specific with my prayers. Can you give me some more detail? And, and here's the thing. If you don't want, we've got people within the church who the prayer group, the Tuesday night prayer group has the specifics. What you see on the prayer list is not always the specifics because some people are guarded like that, and I understand it. But when you've got a group of people going to pray for you, get specific. If you're going to pray for someone, ask specifics. What eye is it? What kidney is it? What exactly is going on? What do you need? And be able to take that time and be specific in your prayers. And then plug into that love and compassion. Love people the way Jesus loved them. What a difference that would make in the world, wouldn't it? If we were actually loving and compassionate. I know I can get better at that. I don't like people. <laughs> Just so you, know. Uh, you know, that's a joke. Y'all know I love you. But that love has to be in action. It can't just be words. Actually show that love to other people. Be Jesus with skin on in every place that you go. And then plug in, plug into declaring the gospel. You're going to spend eternity in heaven because someone declared the gospel to you. Don't hold it back from somebody else. Declare the gospel Give them what they, what Jesus calls us to do. What are you doing to shake the world? Honestly, right now, what are you doing to shake the world around you? And if you're not doing nothing, what do you need to change? What can you do and say, you know what, I'm tired of just going and, and when I'm shaking going to God? I want to be part of the shaking that's going on by God. What are you doing to shake the world around you? Are you truly spending time in prayer? Are you loving the people around you? Let me tell you, if you love and have compassion for someone, you'd probably shake their world. So if you go into work tomorrow and all of a sudden you're loving and compassionate, number one, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. Be like, what happened to you this weekend? Be like, John, you're different today. Well, you know, I'm trying to be loving and compassionate. 
It might last till noon. <laughs> Be loving and compassionate when you go back to work. What about being loving and compassionate in your own house? Having love and compassion for your kids and, and for your spouse and for your next door neighbor. If you want to see the change, you've got to be part of the change. Imagine what would happen if we, as the church, acted like the early church. What if we plugged into the power of prayer and we looked forward to being shaken? Being shaken as individuals, being shaken as a community, and having this church be shaken by the power of God. What if we plugged into the power of love and compassion? Actually loving people for who they are and being compassionate to them. Having one mission, one goal for the entire church. And our job as the church of Jesus Christ is to do what? Make disciples of all nations. You cannot make a disciple if they have not accepted Jesus. But that also means to make a disciple, you've got to be a disciple, which means you need to do your part also. And telling people the gospel. I, I love the way it says in here, these verses. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Everyone who accepts Christ is filled with the Holy Spirit, right? But here's the other question now. Are you speaking the word of God boldly? That's my challenge. Speak the word of God boldly. And, then, and with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was on them all. Who needs grace in this room? Everybody, right? We all could use some grace. You want to know how the grace came? The grace came by them giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So if you want grace, start telling the message of Jesus Christ and get that grace that comes with it. What would happen if each one of us did that, if we spoke the word of God boldly? That'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Imagine the difference it would make. So now i got a question. Are you ready to make a difference? Are you ready to see God move? As I said at the beginning, the power that rested on the early church is available to us today. What we need to do is plug into them same sources of power. Plug into and be amazed at what God does. Here's a chance for you next week. Next week is National Back to Church Sunday. I didn't even know it was a thing. Heard on, heard on K-Love, so it must be true. All right? So back to, and I actually looked it up. It actually started after, after the whole COVID thing. They had this big, you know, a lot of people not going back to church. So they had this back to church Sunday. And it's actually next, next Sunday. So there's this big thing about back to church Sunday. You want to get people back in church that need to be in church? Invite them next week. Next week, we're going to have communion, so we're going to partake in communion together. And what a better way to ask someone to say, hey, you know what? I know you've been out of that community of faith for a while. Uh, I know maybe something's going on in your life. And, and to be able to walk up and say, hey, you know what? I've been praying for you. And, and, and I, I feel shaken. The you know, Lord's doing something inside me and he's doing something inside my church and you know what why don't you come to church and show them some love and compassion give them the gospel of Jesus and get them connected back into a community of believers get them connected back to the local church so invite someone think about it look around the room right now if everyone in this room invited one person that person showed up how packed would this church be next week? Imagine if we did that every week. Think the early church. 
5,000 people accepted Christ in one day. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Number one, it'd be amazing to get 5,000 people inside here. <laughs> We'd be stacked on top of each other. It'd be rather hot, but that's okay. We feel the movement of God. But what about just five? Even better, what if just one person you invite to church next week came to church, heard the gospel, and accepted Jesus? Would that be worth it? Yes. Amen. So take some time, invite someone, hey, it's back to church. I know you ain't been going. <coughs> COVID's been gone for a while. You still want to wear a mask? Go ahead. You can put one on. We won't look at you or talk about you funny. But invite someone to church. And throughout this week, take time in prayer. Tuesday night, Shaking Prayer Group will be right over there. And we'll be lifting up all the prayer requests that come into this church. And besides the prayer request for the church, we pray for the church. We pray for the leadership. We pray for the people inside this church. We pray for our community. Because all that matters. And if it mattered to Jesus, it needs to matter to you. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you. We thank you for your word and how we can look and we can see the early church, Lord. We can see how they moved in a mighty way. And Lord, they didn't have video screens. They didn't have air condition. They didn't have all these buildings. All these things that we have today, they didn't have. But Lord, they moved for you. Lord, we, we see the stories of 3,000 people, 5,000 people coming together, accepting you in one day. And then even going forward and being baptized, Lord. Lord, we know that you're still on the throne. We know you still have that power today. Lord, help us to do what you call us to do. Lord, that we will be a people of prayer. Lord, that we won't pray just when we're shaken, but we will pray to be shaken. Lord, that we will come to you and those around us with love and compassion and be just the way you were. That we would humble ourselves before you. That we would seek your face. And Lord, that when it's said and done, we would tell people about you. We would declare the gospel of Jesus Christ and we would see change in this world. Most importantly, Lord, we will see change in our immediate area, in our environments, in our homes, in our workplaces. And Lord, that you will move inside this church. And Lord, that people will see you moving and that we will be shaken. And Lord, I make this prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I believe there is one salvation, one doorway that leads to life, on redemption, one confession, I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the crucifixion, by his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection, hallelujah, his life is destined. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe. Imagine, ears 
eyes have heard or eyes have seen. I believe that the day is coming, he's returning to claim his bride. Light the altar, keep it burning, see the Lamb who rose the roaring light. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son. What a message. I'm on fire. Are you on fire? Are you shaken today? And it's not emotion. It's the Holy Spirit within us. He wants to get his bride ready. He wants his church to move with power on the earth. Amen? And that's us. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's you. That's you. That's you. Oh, my goodness. Father God, thank you. I'm not going to reiterate pastor's prayer because he prayed eloquently. Get us ready, God. Get us ready. Move in each one of us by your spirit to affect change in our environments. We thank you, God. We thank you for setting a fire under us. We thank you for waking us up and having your way in us. We got this earthen treasure within us, Father, that we need to let out and give people hope. Jesus is the only answer. We know it. And we don't want to keep it to ourselves any longer. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and tell someone about the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us here today at FBC Lantana for Church Online. And, and, and if, if you enjoyed what you saw today, I'd just like to ask you to go ahead, go to our website and, and help support this ministry as we try and outreach and reach the lost for Jesus Christ. And you can just go to our website, fbclantana.com slash give, um, and you can make an online donation right there. Again, I encourage you to get connected to a local church, and especially if during this message you felt compelled to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, definitely go tell somebody. Let someone know because that is the greatest decision you could ever make 
make in your life. And, and from there, get connected to a local church. Hey, we would love to provide you with some resources with that. You can go to our website, fbclantana.com. And on the very front page, you say, give my life to Jesus. Click on there, and at the bottom of there, there's some links and some good information for you. And just wanted to say, welcome to the family.